Hi guys, it's Aoife from Words of Clover and I'm here to do a tag video today. So I want to do a tag video that was created by Doris over at All The Books. This book tag is going to be the What Makes A Great Author tag. And seeing as I am doing this for the Irish Readathon, I am going to make sure that all of the authors that I'm talking about today are all Irish authors and celebrating Irish works of fiction and non-fiction and just great books in general. First question is, a great author whose works you've read in their entirety. And for this one, I'm going to choose Louise O'Neill. So I'm holding up her first book here, which is only ever yours. But as far as I'm aware, I think I've read all of Louise O'Neill's work that she has published um, since only ever yours. So she has all of her kind of young adult do adult novels. And then she also has her middle grade novel, The Surface Breaks, which is kind of a reimagining of The Little Mermaid. And I read that one a few years ago. And I always love Louise O'Neill writing uh, I always love Louise O'Neill's writing. I think she creates stories and characters that are so real and she has characters that are really, really flawed and then she explores some really great modern topics. Like, and she always kind of looks at hard-hitting themes as well, such as um, toxic relationships, uh, like kind of the uh, sexual assault, um, domestic abuse, um, kind of hashtag me too as well in one of her in her re uh, latest release Idol. So yeah, I think she just is a really great writer. And I always when when I know she has a new book coming out, I'm always so so excited to read it. Um, so yeah, I definitely have to choose her. Question number two is a great author who's a one hit wonder. Now this one was kind of hard for me to like figure out who to um who to choose for this one but I've gone with Caroline Barry who wrote The Dolliker. The Dolliker is set in Georgian Dublin. Georgian time Dublin and it is about a woman who is a um she runs an apothecary and she teams up with I don't know whether it if he's a, like kind of some sort of inspector or he's kind of a character who's looking into these mysterious like this mysterious um figure that people are saying is running around killing people that they're calling the Dolliker and they don't know whether it is something supernatural or something not and it's kind of like plays on the themes of like say the the scare around like Jack the Ripper um in Victorian times London and it's a little bit it's a little bit similar to to that that kind of like real scary some like you know really scary things are going on people are really scared there's kind of like a dark twisty feeling in the air and then there's just a lot of great characters in this as well and it's set in a really interesting time in Irish history too so I really really enjoyed this one um but Caroline Barry hasn't written any other books as far as I'm aware I can't see any on her Goodreads either and I really this was a five star read for me I really enjoyed the writing I really enjoyed the story um I loved that historical uh time period as well I just thought it was so interesting so um yeah and it only had like it only has 97 ratings on Goodreads which I checked earlier and yeah it seems like fairly low for a book that is really really good so I would do wish that Caroline Barry would would bring out another novel soon and um, hopefully historical fiction because she obviously can write really really good historical fiction and um, but f so far it seems like the Dolliker is her only book um, and I really love the Dolliker so I would really love another book from her. Question three is a great author who's had a flop or two so this one I'm going to go for Emma Donoghue people know uh, I really really love Emma, Emma Donoghue's I've read a good few of her, of her books oh so yeah I've had some really really great moments with um with Emma Donoghue Frog Music I really really loved Kissing the Witch absolute five out of five stars for me one of my favorite short story collections and The Pull of the Stars is absolutely brilliant where Haven was just such a disappointment for me I really really didn't like it Akin I did like but I just didn't love so yeah she definitely after Haven I realized that she was like there she was able to bring out books that I just didn't connect with at all as well so in my um, reading experience she has had some flops uh, for me. Question number five is a great author whose works are considered classic so for me I've gone with Mae Binchy for this one well, I've kind of gone for two sides of one kind of older and one a bit newer so for me I've gone for Mae Binchy first and um, I have read two Mae Binchy novels at this time um, and I have I read Tara Road last year and I've just finished Light a Penny Candle um, on audiobook and that I think is her was her debut novel and she really loves write, write, writing really big chunky novels that seem to be very um, centered around women uh, around women at a particular time and I really feel like there was a lot of things that she was doing that were was groundbreaking in a way she was giving stories to women who you know there probably wasn't that many stories at the time that she started writing um that focused on women in certain ways in terms of like their romantic relationships their sexual relationship their career and things like that so I've really enjoyed her writing so far that I've read and I really love Light a Penny Candle so I'm really looking forward to um trying to read her books in publication orders now that I've read her very very first one and it'll be really interesting to see if there's any changes in her writing um so yeah I, I'm really looking forward to that and then for another author whose works are considered classic I think a modern classic is definitely Sally Rooney I feel like she has created this kind of I don't know whether you'd call it like sad girl like niche or 
um, a sad girl lit fic or something um, but she definitely had created a, a genre of fiction with her first book which was uh, what conversations of friends and then normal people um, and I feel like she like is, was able to give voice to a certain type of Irish young person in a way that no one else had ever really achieved before and since then we have seen other authors come after her that are you know using the same techniques in a way or the same style and are being fit into this like Sally Rooney category I think like uh, authors like Nisha Dolan or um, Megan Nolan as well so yeah it's really interesting to see that and I think that her work is definitely cons- I, I would definitely consider it a classic I think um as it gets older um, and as we look back and reread it I think it's going to just be considered more and more a modern classic so um yeah question number six is a great author with a cutting edge novel for me I've gone with Edna O'Brien I am currently in the process of reading the Country Girls trilogy I read the first two the country girls and the lonely girls and um, i'm taking a little bit of a break before i jump back into girls um girls in girls in their married bliss and having read her first two novels and kind of thinking with the time that edna o'brien had uh wrote these novels i think it's absolutely amazing that you know she she was daring enough to write some of these novels now you wouldn't like in today's like today's sense of what is scandalous or what is sexy or you know what's out there and O'Brien's like writing and her characters of of Kate and Baba and them you know leaving their country town to to live and live in Dublin and go drinking with men and wear dresses and makeup and you know kind of explore their sexuality a little bit uh you know it's it to us it's it's so it's it's almost like a closed door in a way it's, it's so tame compared to what we can be what we would read otherwise but back then in Ireland like the fact that they were even talking about young girls who are unmarried having sex or even thinking about sex in the first place or thinking about themselves as sexual beings like that would have been completely like outrageous um and the fact that like no there's some mentions of like uh like male appendages and stuff like that as well which you know is really funny and I feel like yeah it would have been very very scandalous for the time that it was written in so yeah she definitely wrote like a cutting edge novel for her time I feel like she really like was really really brave in what she was doing and did it really really well and has such has style and a unique voice in her writing as well and her characters just come to life the way the way she brings characters to life every single one of her characters is unique and fun in some sort of way and I really love like reading all of them so yeah I definitely think she is um the best person for this answer Question number seven is a great author whose work you consider impactful. I'm actually going to go back to some of my earlier earlier um, answers and that again is Edna O'Brien I think in terms of what she has done. I shared a video I think it was last year where I, I talked about a lot of the great female Irish novelists. I will link it up above if you're interested and I kind of in that I kind of stated that I feel like Edna O'Brien opened a door for other women writers to walk through um she kind of I don't even think she opened a door I think she bashed down a wall that men had put up for her and like men and the Catholic Church in Ireland and all the stigma that was in Ireland at the time around what women should or shouldn't do and how they should or shouldn't behave and I think Edna O'Brien just knocked that wall down and said come on through to everyone else behind her and I feel like in that way her her work is so so impactful in the same way and maybe a slightly quieter way I think Maeve Binchy did the same and since then we have had other amazing authors such as uh, Marion Keyes, uh, Louise O'Neill, Sally Rooney, Nisha Dolan, all of these great authors coming through and none of them would have been able to do what they what they are doing right now I don't think if it wasn't for Edna O'Brien and Maeve Binchy back then kind of really showing the types of stories that women could write but also the type of stories that women wanted to read and women wanted to see themselves represented in and yeah I definitely think that is just really really impactful. Question number eight is a great author of nonfiction. And one of my favourite nonfiction books that I've read in recent years has definitely been Don't Touch My Hair by Emma Dabiri. Emma Dabiri is Nigerian Irish. And she, in her book, Don't Touch My Hair, she kind of, she talked about what it was like to grow up in Ireland as, you know, a young black girl. And then, um, then she, she eventually moved over and she lives permanently in London now where she has her family. But then she just talks about what it's like to be black and Irish, but then also what it's like to be black and a woman in the world. And then she goes into a real, amazing history around the like black hair and uh all like these different um both the ways that like women were oppressed because of their hair how they're still being oppressed because of their hair in like workplaces and schools um, and stuff like that but then also when it goes way back to um to 
different tribes in Africa and how they used to use their hair for different ways and hairstyles and stuff like that and you know you could even like there was there's ways that you could say like mathematics and science and astrology could all be told through people's hair and it's absolutely amazing it's actually one I do really need to reread because it's been a few years now since I've read it but I really really loved it and I have since encouraged a lot of people in my life to try and read it and pick it up and it's one I always recommend to people um, if I can. Question number nine is a great author you just don't enjoy reading and then for me this again it was a really hard one because I find that most like Irish authors I do really enjoy there's just a different there's something within Irish writing that I just I do enjoy I think there's like a slight like melancholy melancholy tone sometimes to Irish writing there's like a sadness there or like a ha ha I'm laughing but I'm also really sad kind of way um, and also very self-deprecating um like humour as well in Irish writing that I just really enjoy as an Irish person so I do tend to enjoy a lot of Irish writing but there's a couple of authors that I've read that I haven't really really loved Um, one of these was uh, Milkman by Anna Burns I can appreciate this being a really interesting like novel for a lot of people and I do like kind of the style that she used but for me it was just it was just a little bit dense and a little bit heavy and I did say that um Trespasses by Louise Louise Kennedy kind of recommended it to people who who maybe liked Milkman but struggled with it I said try Trespass by Louise uh, Kennedy you might like it a lot more. Danny Denton as well I read two Danny Denton books and while I enjoyed the premise of his books a lot I find the I guess the execution or the storyline in general the writing style just doesn't suit me really really well. I haven't hated them but they've just been kind of middle of the road reads for me where now I've read two I'm not sure I'd be rushing to read another of his books. And then for the last question it is a great author you have reread or you want to reread soon and for me this is probably Sarah Reese Brennan is an author that I just reread a lot. I really really enjoy her writing she like a lot of her YA writing and um, the Demon's Lexicon series I really love and her Unspoken series I absolutely love and I think it's called the Lindburn Legacy actually not the Unspoken series um, and then also her recent book In Other Lands um, I absolutely loved when I read that I think it was the year before last now that I read it but I absolutely loved it and I'm really really dying to reread that one too soon so I'll definitely be trying to reread that. I'd also like to do a reread of Louise O'Neill's books because it's been a while since I've read some of her older ones so I, I think a reread of those would be really really interesting and to see how much I get out of them now of being a little bit older and maybe more experienced in life as well and then also Dear in a Grief A Ghost in the Troth um, one of my favourite books of all time I still haven't reread it so I really really want to reread it. So that's everything for this tag if you guys would like to do this tag I tag you. Thank Thank you guys so much for watching as always and I'll see you guys again next time.